the big weapon balance patch, which was released along with the January update, changed tons of stuff and pretty much redesigned all of the weapons in Battlefield 1. So in this video, we're gonna take a look at the weapon that is arguably the best one in the game. And before I get any stupid comments saying that Oh, Crafter, you're only making this video because Westy made a video about it. Guys, I don't know how to explain it to you, but... Both me, Westy, Jackfrax and whoever else makes Battlefield videos and we'll talk about Rebel Royce, we all play the same game, we all receive the same update and we all have the same weapons to play with in that particular game. So don't be surprised that we will talk about the same weapons. Of course we will, that's kind of obvious, it's the same game. But back to the initial topic of this video, and that being the Rebel Royce 1918 after TTK 2.0 update, I'm sorry for the pronunciation of the weapon, I don't know how to do it, I tried pronouncing it the way that Google says it should be pronounced, but I just can't do it. It's just, I don't know, my tongue doesn't work this way. But either way, despite if it's supposed to be pronounced Rebel Royce, Rebel Royce, or whatever else it could be pronounced, or however else, I'm sorry I can't speak English either, today we're gonna take a look at this weapon and see what's so special about it. Why does every Battlefield 1 YouTuber hype it out so much in the video, and what makes it so good? Generally the thing with Rebel Royce is that it's always been great. It came to the game with the They Shall Not Pass DLC, the French one, and it's always been a very good weapon. The problem with Assault Weapon Arsenal before TTK update though, was that all of the weapons were practically worse than the Hellrigel. If you wanted to dominate everyone, you always went for the Hellrigel, and there was no other choice. Even though the Rebel Royce had great accuracy, it even had a bipod, and it still does have a bipod, allowing you to extend its effective range, it still wasn't that great if you compared it to the Hellrigel, because Hellrigel had practically everything you would need to if you were playing Assault. But now that all of the weapons got rebalanced and Hellrigel actually got nerfed, even though it got buffed, it's quite complicated, but essentially damage got increased, but the overall accuracy of the weapon got decreased. But this isn't the video about Hellrigel, so what makes the Rebel Race so special now? Well, partially it is due to the fact that the Hellrigel got nerfed and now that the Rebel Race got buffed, it actually shines between other assault weapons. Truth be told, it is not a god gun and it never will be, so don't get too excited yet. I know I might have killed your hype right now, but it's just not. The weapon isn't great for up close, it isn't great for medium range and it isn't great for the long range either. But the thing about Rebel Royce is that it will do good or you will do good with it on pretty much all of those ranges. It will not be extremely good at any of them, but if you need a versatile weapon which will allow you for engaging enemies at pretty much every distance in any given situation that you could possibly imagine, you go for the Rebel Royce. You don't know what to expect, you're not necessarily certain what playstyle to pick, you go with Rebel Royce. Because even though it won't be super good in any of those situations, you will have a weapon that you can rely on in all of those scenarios. You have a great hipfire accuracy, you can take someone out from very close. You can engage someone on the medium range using medic weapons and still you have chances of outplaying them. Very high chances, I say. Then again, you want to engage someone on longer distances, of course, you're not gonna take out snipers in 1v1 situation, especially on the distance about 200 meters, or even less, you're still not gonna make it. But, again, you can always extend it with your bipod and get some extra accuracy, have higher damage output on range, and with Hellrigel or any other assault weapon, you don't really have that option. This video isn't really a proper weapon review, and it was never supposed to be, but since we are talking about Rebel Race so much in details, we could potentially take a look at its statistics. In short, it can kill enemies in 4 shots, it's got 550 rate of fire, and all of this is combined with 25 bullets in the magazine. 
Again, you can see it, it's not great or outstanding in any situation, but it's decent in all of them. And this is pretty much the reason why all of the Battlefield YouTubers are hyping this weapon up, or will be hyping it up. Maybe not everyone made videos about it yet, but trust me, there will be tons of videos about Rebel Royce and everyone will pretty much say the same thing. It is jack of all trades, it is decent in every situation, but it's not outstanding in any of them. Anyway guys, that would be it for this video. As I've already said, it was never supposed to be a proper weapon review, more like an explanation of why everyone is using Rebel Royce and why everyone is so hyped about it. Before you click off the video though, I just want to announce that you might see more Battlefield 1 gameplays on this channel rather than news and update videos, at least in the upcoming weeks considering that there is pretty much nothing going on. We do have the Apocalypse DLC in CTE, but other than that there is pretty much nothing to talk about and I want to keep the content coming. As always, if you enjoyed, remember to leave a like subscribe and I see you on the battlefield.